Hi, I'm going to be talking a bit about how to pass options to a slide deck function. When you make a slide deck, you use a jQuery selector, the slide deck function, and then this collection of options that are enclosed in a JavaScript object. The concept of a JavaScript object might be a little foreign to a lot of us, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how those work and then we'll actually dive into a few examples showing some of the basic configurations that you can do when creating a standard jQuery slide deck. So let's start by looking at a JavaScript object. We start by creating two curly braces facing each other. Inside of these curly braces are where we put our options. So for instance, the option for speed, followed by a colon, and then an integer, in this case, 1000 milliseconds. Because the option for speed is an integer, we don't have to enclose the value in quotes or do anything else fancy. If we want to add another value, we just add a comma and then type the other property name, like transition, followed by a colon, and then the transition value. Now, if we take a quick look at the slide deck documentation, you can see right here the transition needs to be a string. The long and short of it is that that means it needs to be enclosed in quotes because it's a literal word. So we can change our transition to linear. And that's basically how a JavaScript object works. You have properties followed by a colon, followed by a value, separated by a comma. Now this gets really crazy to read when it's all on one line. So most of us like to break these up onto a multiple line statement like this. So if we go back to our example file, Right here is where we want to place our JavaScript object. Let's start by looking at the slide deck with no options passed to it. We're just looking at defaults right now. We can see that the transition is a sort of a gentle transition. The speed is default and there's nothing extra happening. Furthermore, when I reload the page, it goes to slide one. I'm going to add my object, hit enter a couple times just to get my formatting looking really nice. And then I'm going to add the start property. Now the start property is an integer because it's just which slide we want it to start on, which is a number. So let's set the start property as three. We save this file, go back to Firefox, reload the page, and now we're starting on slide three. Next, we'll look at the index option. The indices are these numbers right here on each slide. If we look at the slide deck options, we can see that the option we need to add is index. It can be true, false, or an array of values. Let's see how that works. By default, it's true, so we have numbers. If we added it, remember it has to be separated by commas, so we add a comma after the start option, and then we add index. The default value is true, so let's change it to false. We'll save this file, go back to Firefox, and reload the page. And all of a sudden, our indices go away. This is really good if you just wanted to clean the slide deck up. But if you wanted to add custom indices, you can do that too. Let's go back to Notepad. And instead of passing a Boolean true or false value, we're going to pass an array. To pass an array, we use square brackets, type the first value, separate it by a comma, type the second value, and so on. So here we have three values in an array. Our first value will be A, second value will be 2, third value will be 3. If we save this file, go back to our browser and reload, we now have A, 2, 3. Notice that the fourth slide is extra. We only defined three index values, but we have four slides. So indexes just repeat as they get to the end of themselves. So it'll go A23, A23, A23. The next option I'd like to look at is the keys option. A lot of you may not know this, but a slide deck by default can be controlled by the keyboard. So if I hit my left arrow, I go to the previous slide. And if I hit my right arrow, I go to the next slide. Sometimes you don't want this behavior. If there's something else on your page that uses the arrow keys, this behavior might clash. So here's how you can disable it. In the slide deck options, there's an option right here for keys. It's a Boolean value, so just like index, 
you can use true or false. It doesn't accept anything like a string or an integer or an array because a boolean value is typically yes or no. Let's go back to notepad for one second and let's add keys. Let's change it to false as we don't want keys anymore. Notice that I remembered to put a comma after my index property. A good rule of thumb is that you want a comma at the end of every line except the last line. This is no big deal for modern browsers like Firefox and uh, Safari, but Internet Explorer will freak out if you put a comma in the wrong place. So in general, make sure that the last item in your list doesn't have a comma, because as you can see here, it's not necessary. You only need commas in between items. Anyway, let's save this file, go back to our browser, and reload our example. Here we can see, you can probably hear, the, hear me tapping the keys in the audio. Here you can see that the keys no longer do anything. And that's what we wanted. I think I've made the options pretty clear at this point. So let's add a bunch of options and just have some fun with it. I'm going to go back to Notepad and I'm going to change my index option to uppercase A, lowercase A. And then I'm going to bring a bunch of options in from my clipboard. So I'm just going to add active corner false. That'll remove this little arrow. Transition linear. That's going to make the actual left to right animation of the slide very rigid and robotic. And speed 5000. That's going to make each slide take five seconds to animate. So let's save this file, go to Firefox, reload our page, and see what it looks like. See the animation takes five seconds now, and it's really rigid and slow. And even though I used uppercase A and lowercase A for my spines, the CSS capitalizes the indices. So let's go back to that one second, and let's instead just change that to A and B. I'm going to save the file reload our browser. Now we have A, B, A, B. It's a, an excruciatingly slow animation. No active corner. And a linear transition. Now that we've looked at some of the options that can be used with Slide Deck, you can go ahead and try your own combinations. For instance, you can change the indices, change the start slide, you can turn on autoplay, you can disable keyboard navigation, change the transition, adjust the speed, and even do some more advanced things that I'm not going to talk about in this video. So, have fun with those options and uh, leave any questions you have in the comments.